when I'm asked why children are being pushed towards this trans movement, uh, you know, and gender mutilation and drag shows and drag queen story hour, we have to understand we've now arrived at a time in the timeline of the master plan that's been with us since the 1930s and 40s. The plan to destabilize America, it was always going to be to bring sexual immorality into its youth. It's how most cultures fell. It's how Rome fell. It's how the Persians fell. The Asians, the Greeks fell. It's always been the plan to sexualize your child. COVID, the internet and COVID rapidly advanced it. It gave access to children, unfeathered access on their phones. So now all of a sudden it feels like it's an avalanche, but it's been coming. We had male sexual erect organs in Disney movies, in murals in the 1950s. It's always been there. There's child sexual exploitation in Playboy magazines encrypted. It's always been subliminal. It's chipping away at the iceberg, but we've now reached critical mass. We've now reached a place where the stress test in society was not met with enough resistance so that the organized faction of this crime, and it's a crime to exploit a child, is bold and is emboldened because it has not yet met real resistance. And now they're doubling down. They're coming for the children because the children is in fact America. That's our future. And a child that has been sexually abused or exploited is a shell of a person will live to survive. Forget about that child when 18, fighting for the First Amendment, Second Amendment, for the Bill of Rights, for the Constitution. The sexually exploited individuals live to survive. They don't live to thrive. They don't fight for freedom. They fight for safety, and they'll sacrifice freedom for safety. So the ultimate plan by Satan is to break this nation, to drive her to her knees by sexually exploiting the children. And that's why you're seeing this massive push by gender mutilation, the transgender movement, co-opting children into saying, I'm transgender at age two, four, five, and having ultimately parents subjecting their children to this by taking them to the drag shows co-opting the parent in, normalizing it in a child's mind, and most evilly, opening the door for Satan to completely destroy that child. We are born as sexual beings. So if someone asks me, Yaku, do you think children are inherently sexual? The truth is God created sexuality. We are sexual beings from birth, but we're not active. And that's the question to be asked. God decided that the normal life cycle would be for a child to go through puberty between the age of 12 and 15. And I understand there are outliers. We've seen nine-year-olds get pregnant. And then we've seen children hit puberty very late. But for the most part, God ordained a certain time. And there's a time and a place for everything. And right now, society is trying to accelerate that timeline. And now what happens when you do that is the endorphins fire the neurons in the brain fire, and you can never get those moments back. So they're sexualizing children in a way where they're hypersexualizing them by awakening their little minds and brains prematurely to what God's ultimately destined for them. But they're, but they're forcing it to happen prematurely, and the child does not have the ability to comprehend sex. We have a hard enough time as adults to understand sex. So the destruction comes in prematurely exposing the child to something that God ultimately ordained as good to bond a husband and a wife for two to become one. People ask me often, well, who's doing this? Who are these people that's pushing drag shows and, and uh, sexual transition on children? We have to understand it's very organized. There's actually a plan, and organizations come into agreement with this plan. It's an evil plan, but you're either in agreement with God or you're in agreement with Satan. There's nothing in between. So we do see major institutions in the United States, historically, the, the fashion industry, the music and entertainment industry, but it's still individuals within those organizations that steer those organizations in this direction. And then movements such as MAMBLA, Man Boy Love Association, Planned Parenthood, SICUS, the World Health Organization, all four of those 
co-opted new sexual doctrine for the world's youth based off of Alfred Kinsey's work from the 1940s and 1950s, where he sodomized young boys aged six weeks and older and said, this is the sexuality of a male and a female. So the organizations in our culture today, sometimes celebrated by people such as Planned Parenthood, Sickest World Health Organization, and then UNESCO in the United Nations, ultimately they drive this narrative into organizations like the, the transgender movement or the Man Boy Love Association that then filters down into culture. And then they find little champions who are, who are in, in social culture to drive the narrative. Sometimes people will make a comment and, and, and act like these things happen in silos. When, you, when you're thinking about the, the movement to convince children to transition, the transgender movement, gender mutilation, when we're talking about double mastectomy for 12-year-old girls, it's all connected. It's connected to sex trafficking. It's connected to sexual ex exploitation, to abuse, and ultimately, it's connected and driven by child pornography. It's all connected. It's even connected to the abortion movement. It's impossible to look at any one of these things in a silo. Look at them as tools to accomplish a common goal. It's, an, it's a tool that erodes at the moral fiber and fabric that God created for that child. So whether it is exposing the child to child porn or exposing the child to a culture that is pushing the child to say, maybe I'm trans, or then even going further with puberty blockers and, and gender mutilation, we've seen it in cultures around the world. They'll use all the different tools in unison hoping that one of these would stick with a child and would drive the narrative in that individual child. So it's inseparable. These things are correlated and coordinated. Something that saddens me is when parents miss the just of, of why these people who host drag shows want children in the drag show it's a self-perpetuating, self-fulfilling notion. It's literally recruitment. It's recruiting a mindset and a mantra that ultimately is an anti-God movement for what God established in sexuality in human beings. So yes, they're recruiting future generations by indoctrinating the child. And, I, and I, as I said in another scenario, imprinting the child with a sexual mindset prematurely. The question we should be asking is, why are parents being co-opted to take their children to these drag shows? So not only is the child being recruited, groomed, and then of course all the other nefarious characters will show up such as the pedophiles and the abusers, but now they're also grooming and co-opting the parents to be complicit, to surrender the future of their child into this movement to grow, ultimately grow the movement as an anti-God movement and a sexually immoral movement, a practice that has failed as long as the earth has existed. The Roman culture failed at this practice, the Persians fell, the Asians fell, and the Greeks fell, and America's falling. Recently, someone said, but Yaku, the child made the decision uh, that he's transgender. And I said, how old's the child? And they said, well, he's two and a half. And I said, well, didn't he, he last month say that he's a firefighter? Don't children explore and test things? Don't they say things? So when a child says, I'm a firefighter at two, we should lock it in and say, that's it, Johnny. You're going to be a firefighter. Well, why, Dad? Because you said it once. Children explore. Children will, boys will play with their sister's toys and vice versa. It's a way of learning how to actually engage with the other sex. It's actually a way to learn how to understand women for boys and boys for girls. It doesn't mean that that child in that moment has made an infinite decision for the rest of their life and has forfeited their right later on in life to the parents in the moment to make an ultimate eternal decision for them that now they're either transgender or not. So the rise is because the option is being presented to the child. A child 
has a fertile mind. God, in Scripture says, a seed planted in fertile soil will grow. He doesn't say a good seed or a bad seed. It's not about the seed. The seed's going to grow. It's about the fertile soil. And a child has a fertile mind. So if you plant the seed of homosexuality, if you plant the seed of masturbation in a five-year-old's mind, that seed is going to grow because the mind is fertile. So if you plant the seed of transgenderism, puberty blockers, sex change, gender mutilation, the child now by default becomes inquisitive, will look into it, will start to contemplate it. You're moving sex from the back of the brain that should be dormant until 12 to the frontal lobe. The child is now sexually activated, is now thinking about sex. Now you opened a door for Satan to mess with that child's mind. That's why you're seeing the rise because if for the same for the same reason all the boys love Paw Patrol because it's what's pre- presented to them and in the moment they want to be cops and firefighters because that's what's presented to their young minds. You present a young boy to, to sport, he's going to be in love with sport or at least he's going to try it. So now they're offering an option for a young boy to try being transgender. That little mind is going to grab it is going to consider it as an option. It's going to explore it, unfortunately, to the child's own detriment. I implore Texans, specifically Texans, to return to the heart of God, be selfless, put the innocence of a child first, understand what God meant when He said, rather you put a millstone around your neck and cast yourself in the ocean than cause one of these little ones to stumble. Presenting sexual immorality to a child as an option that that child will then run with is evil. It is anti-God. And I'm asking Texans for once to forget about woke culture or what is politically correct. And let's go to truth. Let Texans again lead the way to reestablish family where fathers are in the home engaged, earning the hearts of their daughters, presenting the gospel to their children, protecting their children from evil and the wolves out there, not presenting the wolf as a positive option. Texans must lead the way because I do not see another state capable of picking up that torch. It's going to have to be Texas and Texas parents are going to have to reestablish truth and morality in their own homes and then for their children and champion that in their children. It's the only way we're going to turn this tide. Turn from your wicked ways. I will hear your prayers, and I will heal your land. That land is also your home. It's your community. It's your school. It's the heart of your child. And ultimately, Texas can lead this nation.